business today i must i'm very excited with me is a gentleman who is going to talk to us about exports in this particular case we're looking at fresh goods now when you hear the word fresh you're assuming you know of course definitely it's vegetables fruit and a whole lot more from the country to the european union but of course he'll give us more details on that with me is dr kanuji kanuji james Yes. You're very welcome. Thank you, madam. Yes. Mm. Uh, we're glad to have you here on UBC because uh, this is a topic that many probably are interested in finding out on how you do. But first of all, how, what is KK Foods? Let us understand what KK Foods is. KK Foods is a, a private owned company mm -hmm. uh, formed to cater for the needs of uh, the rural poor oh. needs okay. in terms of produ production and export of their produce into European Union. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's that's a brief about it. Okay, so you say produce and export. Now let's look at the process through which we are going at. Like, let us look at how. Uh, let us go to the producing part now. What are those things that you look at and consider as a process uh, in this particular case? Uh, first of all, uh, you have to, 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 to. The process starts f with the farmer who has the land, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, we, we, when he has the land, uh, then we look at. Uh, does he have the means to use to 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 tear this land or to prepare the land uh, mm -hmm. ready for for producing uh, goods for export and then uh, for his own consumption mm -hmm. and then when we find that yes he can then we take on the, the training uh, training him on what we want mm -hmm. him or her on what we want the standards uh, and and what to do and we make sure uh, we also look for seeds to make sure that they uh, he has to put in the nursery, we teach them all to the uh, to the post harvest uh, training of how to to, to harvest, uh, not to lose it, and uh, it's it's a, it's it looks a big process, but uh, when uh, you start it, it becomes easy, and then look how train them how to look after their crop, how to water their crop. Uh, you know, we are still uh, having a substance uh, farming society where we, which we must train of how to use the the, the little resources they have mm -hmm. uh, the water uh, of course we, we are the pioneers of the bottles that we saw our president our loved president uh, yeah. uh, we are pioneers but for us we did not carry the tvs to, to show because uh, we are a private owned company that we are there in the village but we are training them uh, how to use the the plastic bottles yes. to water the crop but that is on a on a smaller scale but it produces uh, fruits and, and, and we've been doing it for the last 17 years and uh, we are happy that we have now graduated to a very big uh, uh, company mm -hmm. uh, that is a daring of the buyers in europe due to our trainings and our uh, product uh, quality okay now let us look at the process here in regards to the exporting bit uh, the, the export uh, in Uganda is, is easy to export. Uh, okay. wh what is important is to have mm. what to export. Yes. And, and that's a big challenge. Uh, if you have what to export and you, uh, you, know the, you have the market, it's mm. just there are no barriers. Uh, the conducive environment that has been created by the NRM government is really everywhere. Mm -hmm. We do get goods and, uh, and exporting is easy. European Union does not charge you anything. Mm -hmm. Ugandan government does not charge you anything. So really, it is as easy as eating uh, uh, matoke. Indeed. Now, there's a challenge a couple of years back that we had. Now, what we're seeing on the screen there is some papers. And uh, the, they were saying that the standards that we are giving, you know, in regards to what we're exporting uh, away, uh, was lacking. And they said if we did not uh, figure that out, then definitely, at some point, I think our fruits and vegetables were banned. Uh, Yes, I can say yes, uh, and the challenge still stands. Mm. But this is something that can be wiped out. But uh, there are inefficiencies uh, in government departments mm. in tackling uh, uh, this issue. Mm. This issue, this is a pace that is known. We can create free zones. Mm -hmm. We can uh, have uh, a proper uh, training uh, on, 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 on quality and uh, how to control the pest. Mm -hmm. But seriously, uh, the people in the authority, the people who are given these jobs to, to tackle it are not tackling it. Mm -hmm. uh, the research is not there. We need research to search about this pest. Mm -hmm. The Europeans are not saying 
ban. Mm -hmm. No, even they have not. Even now, they have not banned us, mm -hmm. but they have warned us about this uh, first quarter in moss. This is a moss that lives in the tropics, and it will not go away. They know it, but they are saying, "Can you kill it before it comes to European Union?" Mm -hmm. Because it's a big problem. But we see our people in authority not tackling it the way they are supposed to tackle it, mm -hmm. not handling it the way they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a problem to us also. These are the things we have talked about them over and over with the government the officials. Mm -hmm. But it, it seems not going away because they either don't want to work about it, they either, either don't like government programs, <laughs> or they either not want the farmers to or the, the poor to get the money because okay. it's straightforward mm -hmm. that this pest is there and it will be there in our times and not in our times okay. but how do we protect our crop from this crop uh, this this pest okay. science must come into play because even uh, two months ago european U union wrote to to the government of uganda mm -hmm. uh, and giving them options but neither of those options has been taken in place so it's quite uh, a big issue mm -hmm. and uh, we are handling it through relevant authorities though it is taking uh, so as a private sector player here, you, you have taken time and, uh, well, you know, keen notice and pushed for these uh, changes to be made. Or maybe, because uh, sometimes the private sector is waiting. They sit and wait. Uh, correct. I have myself, uh, the person you see here, mm. I have created uh, a link between my company and European Union. Mm, okay. I have discussed with them in, in Brussels. I have gone and talked to the to the to the Commission, mm -hmm. and I have discussed with them. And uh, even last week, I just came in two days ago from Germany, where mm -hmm. I had a discussion with the EEC uh, member about mm -hmm. uh, how do we tackle our, this issue. Uh, but the issue they seem to be uh, seeing it as a government issue, not a private not issue, a private issue yeah. uh, and that's where uh, we, we 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 are now looking for how do we how do the government intervene? But as a company, for me, I came into this business because there is a big big market. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, before I go further, mm. the industry that you are in, uh, what we call hot culture, mm -hmm. can employ up to five million Ugandans. Because this is the only crop that you can export, you can produce within four months, mm. and have daily income throughout the year. But I think people have left it, to, and they only say it is to those who did not go to school. But uh, I am here with a PhD <laughs> and uh, educated man. But no, people see, are not what caring. What is happening about is probably people are scared. When you go to the horticulture business, it, it's a, it's a little bit tricky, I think. Don't you think? But it's just you're, you're in the business. You could tell us how. Is but, it? But, but what tricky? You see, this group, uh, mm. the president has just demonstrated it. Mm. Uh, and uh, Ugandans are choosing to be poor. And I can say yes, they are choosing <laughs> to be poor because you see. Yeah. In Uganda, we are still lucky. We don't need fertilizers mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. The president needs to tell us if he actually added fertilizers in his farm. But me, I have not added fertilizer, but I have earned mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my uh, money from my farm. Mm -hmm. But the point is that we have these resources. Mm -hmm. That mean, That's the land. What we are looking for that will uh, put the engine on is that key. Mm -hmm. And the key is the means. And that means must come from the government. But currently, this whole culture industry can and will, because for me, I don't believe uh, in, in losing any battle. This is, like a, this is a war that we must fight. Must and, and people must, all our people in the villages must get income because this is a crop. Mm -hmm. You produce in a good soils in a countryside, yes. and then you sell it to international market. And everybody should join us because for us, we create the market which we can actually sustain and for a long a time and, and, and the big 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 market mm -hmm. when so i go I there for example if i give an example last week i was in germany i met uh, the customers in italy customers where they were just saying mm -hmm. just go back and sleep cover your, your <laughs> cover yourself because you are afraid to, to deliver oh, yeah. to our expectations uh -huh. and i started talking about uh, no rain they, yeah. they gave me example of egypt and israel israel yeah. is the biggest producer of sweet potato do they have rain? No. Egypt is the biggest producer of oil. Do they have rain? So what is the problem here? Exactly. No excuse there. Now, real quickly, why are you, why uh, specifically European Union? Why 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 aren't you? Uh, uh, that's where we found the market, mm -hmm. and that's where the big market is, and that's where we can actually uh, uh, get uh, big opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yes, the connection to Europe is much better than the connection in Africa, actually. Mm. Because uh, the, we have market in West African countries. 
but we can hardly deliver there. I have market in Ghana, mm -hmm. but I cannot deliver there because I, I have no where is the cargo plane to so Ghana true. connection. You have to go to Europe and then you connect back to Africa. Okay. So the problem is how Africans were marketing ourselves, mm -hmm. is why we cannot do business in Africa. The business we are doing in Europe, but mm -hmm. even our marketing strategy in Africa, country to country, uh, is, a, is a big problem when you come to Nakasero. What you buy is from Kenya, but ours are rotting in in Chisoro and Kabale. Mm -hmm. So there are connection, there are marketing uh, gaps in the government mm -hmm. that if they are uh, uh, somehow uh, rectified, mm -hmm. we can sell locally. Indeed. Now, more extensively on the challenges that you're facing, because when when we are talking about fresh uh, vegetables and fruit, someone would think, how don't some of them get there? Because you know that these are like perishable almost so uh, someone would wonder don't they get there not as fresh as they should be or you have a particular way of handling that uh, very good question uh, mm. and uh, this is where our attention should be mm. european union has standards that are mm. set and everybody knows them we must control the temperature of our produce but uh, in uganda today we do not have that facility and that's a challenge. Some, most of the exports that go to Europe, there are a lot of losses at the marketplace due to heat. There are no cold chain. There are no procuring systems. Mm -hmm. The charcoal coolers that used to be in the villages were all uh, either uh, left to rot or whatever happened to them, I don't know. But us as a company, uh, with our, our, our uh, there are many challenges. When you face challenges, you must look for solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, for the, we have been trading for the last uh, KK has been trading for the last uh, six years. Though I am in this business for the last seventeen sure, years, yeah. but uh, we have now developed what we call a cold chain system. Because I've been fighting, I've been talking, I've met the minister, of, I've met the permanent secretary, the minister of, of finance, mm -hmm. looking for money to set up cold chain in Uganda so that our farmers can deliver to these centers so that the goods remain in the freshness as it is required in Europe. But mm. my talkings and my meetings uh, hit a, a dead end. I have, I have, uh, uh, we have uh, somehow improvised. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone into uh, oil people money, but mm -hmm. we have set up one of state of art, only one in Uganda, the, the full cold chain system that uh, soon will be opened uh, when we get audience with the president mm -hmm. to be opened in Uganda for the first time because yeah. all European countries are producing something they are controlling their own uh, freshness or yeah. their own food uh, all products to be remain fresh mm -hmm. what they are lacking is the taste of our, our food is, is, is much 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 more uh, than, uh, than theirs yeah. and that's where we are defeating them but we in Uganda we are not up to the quality standard accepted acceptable in Europe mm -hmm. because we do not control any uh, any uh, freshness or, or, or produce mm -hmm. as we pick the goods they start losing moisture because we do not have uh, a cold chain system but mm -hmm. KK foods uh, thanks to our our people we are dealing with uh, mm -hmm. we have been able to put up a cold chain that will be doing up to a hundred times a, a day Okay. Uh, but uh, we are yet to get to have to feel uh, we are yet to get the produce actually mm. my problem and why i'm here mm. is that to, to peel for the products mm. the products in uganda are <laughs> yes. not there that's yes. why i'm saying people are choosing to be poor mm. because the market is there they are not they are not delivering to it they're, they're not so real quickly uh the people you're partnering with here are they, are they also private uh, entities or uh, some of them are public they are all public, uh, they are all uh, private uh, partners mm. uh, because I've tried public uh, offices and, 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 and I've failed not, not, yeah. and I've tried. Mm. Uh, recently I got a market in, in Dubai mm. but the, the prices were not matching. Mm -hmm. I, I went to the government, the Minister of Finance, can you match this so that we can fulfill the, this market? I also hit a dead end. So mm. we are dealing with private private because we are failing to catch up with the public uh, 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 public uh, partners we are paying those public partners because hot culture seems not to be one of their uh, catch their catch yes. very true now uh, as as our uh, uh, director that gets the personality real quickly before we wind up why did you choose as uh, james to go into this business first of all 
uh, I have passion for farming. Myself, I'm a farmer. I have a farm uh, in Ubsika, mm -hmm. in the rural district, mm -hmm. uh, where I started the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and from the beginning, when I was growing, I grew up in the village, in the mountains of Urwampara, in, in Barara district. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in the banana plantation, in uh, growing crops with my mom and, and mm -hmm. the family. But uh, even when I went to school, the passion of producing food uh, remained there. What came after was the producing for export. Mm -hmm. to earn the, the foreign exchange, to earn pounds, to earn dollars. It came in that this money can come in and, uh, and uh, somehow uh, I used my energy and also God, you know, I, I, I am a servant of God, mm -hmm. also God added there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that passion has now produced uh, uh, better results for this country. Okay, yes, very interesting. Me. Now lastly, let us look at uh, what uh, this, in, in regards to horticulture exports, what uh, you feel in terms of performance and what we're bringing in into the country? It could be uh, a thousand times more mm -hmm. if we had what to sell. Oh. Mm, the point that all the Ugandans must know, we don't have what to sell. Even if I tell you the crops, uh, we don't have what to sell? We don't have I, to sell all the right uh, product no, to start. Even the, even the wrong product, even the right product, we don't have. <laughs> they, because I signed a contract, as a company yeah. signed a contract with an airline. Because oh, yeah. you see, our market, when it, it grew, mm. we decided to, to, to sign a contract with the with big airlines in the world mm. to come and make sure I take our 100 tons every, every day from here. Mm. <laughs> Did we, we didn't know mm. that actually uh, Ugandans may fail to produce <laughs> uh, and we we are actually present currently in 33 districts oh wow boosting we're talking about about 10,000 farmers mm -hmm. with now uh, around 1600 youth uh, that uh, we are partnering with Swiss contact mm -hmm. all of those we have the, we, ha we have them but the problem is that they have no means to produce oh. lack of water uh -huh. lack of resources mm -hmm. for example uh, chemicals uh, getting them is, an, uh, is a problem. Mm -hmm. What we get in the market actually kills the product because it's fake. So there are uh, more problems in our, in our market, mm -hmm. uh, in our producing end, than our market end. Okay. So there is no balance. If we, the market end was the same as production, mm -hmm. we would be okay because uh, our company is now uh, $6 million turnover per year. Mm -hmm. This company would be even $100 million okay. because the market we have is enough to do that but we do not have enough product to maintain the market okay as simple as that now definitely my time has run out but i'm going to sneak this in real quickly before we wind up um let us look at uh, the horticulture business or rather now that you're in exports in the next few years do you probably see a glimmer of uh, light or hope that probably uh, there'll be changes there'll be improvement and even make more money from there for me, as I said, uh, I never have a vocabulary called uh, failure. Mm. I never think of failing something. And now that even the president has joined me, mm -hmm. I am more uh, than happy. I'm more happy than ever before mm. because uh, the future looks bright mm -hmm. because we will get produce. Now, at least I know that I can run to, 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 to him. Mm -hmm and say this is and then uh, I get masses produced but most important thing is that the future of this industry is, is, is bright mm -hmm. because the market is increasing mm -hmm. due to world population increase mm -hmm. so for me I do not think about the the, the past yeah. I think about yeah, the, future. the future and the future for us <laughs> as a nation is bright interesting dr james kanije and of course he is i think your your, your co-owner partner uh, of uh, kk foods yes i started this company mm. me and my wife okay very interesting and, uh, now that is we now it's now a public company we want uh, every farmer to own it okay because as they own it then they will get they will deliver produce there mm -hmm. and then it becomes bigger we want it to yeah. be a public uh, company mm. though it needs to 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 to, uh, to to leave the the other stage and go to a, another step. The mm -hmm. first step is now done. Mm -hmm. We have set our, our brand is uh, vibrant. KK Foods. You wherever you go and up mm -hmm. to America, you talk about KK Foods. Everybody knows us. Now that's done. Mm -hmm. What's not done is what that brand represents. What does it represent? <laughs> the Ugandan crop. The Ugandan product. Yes. Where are they? Is what 
is missing now. Okay, that very day, interesting. Mm. If it is done. Okay, James Kanyeje, Dr. James Kanyeje there, of course, for KK Foods. And I must say that uh, they are uh, produce exporters and, of course, uh, in fresh fruits and vegetables and a whole lot more. Now, he has pointed out on a couple of things on how the business is going on and what the challenges might be. Uh, probably uh, how best we could solve most of these challenges, especially in the export business. Real quickly, our personality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cook, born November 1st, 1960, is an American business executive, industrial engineer, and developer. Cook is the chief executive officer of Apple Inc., previously serving as the company's chief operating officer under its founder, Steve Jobs. Cook joined Apple in March 1998 as Senior Vice President of Worldwide Operations and then served as Executive Vice President of Worldwide Sales and Operations. He was made Chief Executive on August 24, 2011, prior to Jobs' death in October of that year. During his tenure as the Chief Executive, he has advocated for the political reformation of international and domestic surveillance, cyber security, corporate taxation both nationally and abroad, American manufacturing and environmental preservation. In 2014, Cook became the first Chief Executive of a Fortune 500 company to publicly identify as gay. Cook also serves on the boards of directors of Nike, the National Football Foundation, and is a trustee of Duke University. In early 2012, he was awarded compensation of 1 million shares vesting in 2016 and 2021 by Apple's board of directors. And in March 2015, he said he planned to donate his entire stock fortune to charity. I well, would we'll definitely appreciate you for watching UBS Inspiring Uganda. This is Business Today. And I am Rowena Kajumba. It's time for me to sign out like they always say, even the best dancers do eventually leave the dance floor. Now, I do wish you a lovely day. Rowena Kajumba, Business Today. Good day. <laughs>